The first known drone strike after 9-11 outside of Afghanistan um, actually was in Yemen in November of 2002. Uh, the Bush administration authorized a strike uh, that ended up killing um, a half a dozen people, in including a U.S. citizen. Um, my understanding is that they didn't necessarily know that this U.S. citizen was going to be in the convoy, but he was affiliated with this al-Qaeda organization within Yemen. And then you had kind of a, you, you had a gap after that um, where drones were not a primary part of U.S. policy. And then in the, in the mid-2000s, um, President Bush uh, really started to ratchet up the drone strikes, made a number of deals with the Pakistani government of Pervez Musharraf at the time um, to allow the U.S. to position drones inside of Pakistan at an air base called Shamsi, and also um, in neighboring Afghanistan, uh, the U.S. had drones at, its, at the base in Jalalabad. And they started increasing the number of drone strikes, and they were, they were striking in Waziristan, and there would be you know, reports that 14 militants were killed, 23 militants were killed. Well, what we started to see was that a tremendous number of civilians were also being killed. And because of the unreliability of some media outlets in Pakistan um, and propaganda from the U.S. government as well and the Pakistani government, it's hard to know exactly how many civilians have been killed. But I do think that it's safe to say that more civilians uh, or non-military targets have been killed in Pakistan um, than actual militants or people that were on a, a targeted kill list from the United States. Enter President Obama in, in January of 2009. He gets sworn in, and three days after being sworn in, he authorizes his first uh, lethal drone strike um, in Pakistan, and it actually killed a number of civilians, and that was the first uh, known drone strike that Obama authorized. And his administration, I think, has been a pretty major supporter of the idea of drone warfare, robotic warfare. Recently, at the toward the end here of, of 2011, um, there, there reports emerged that President Obama was overseeing uh, the, an expansion of bases where drones can operate. Uh, the U.S. operating drones out of Djibouti in East Africa, uh, Ethiopia, which is also in East Africa, and then the Seychelles Islands as well. And I think that the next frontier is going to be an escalation of the drone war um, in East Africa and along the Arabian Peninsula. Yemen is going to be a, a, a big area uh, where drones are striking. Somalia already, there have been a number of drone strikes. When I was there over the summer, there were drone strikes happening. Um, and another big area that the Obama administration's counterterrorism team has been talking about is North Africa, Mali, Mauritania. Um, there's a group called Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. And so, you know, I, th I think what we're sort of seeing emerge is, is, is the sort of mini Obama doctrine within the, you know, the, the, the larger scope of U.S. counterterrorism policy, which is, which is returning to um, a, a sort of proxy war mentality of the 1980s in Central America, support for the Contras and others, is happening uh, you know, on, a, on, a, on a level in Somalia where warlords are being embraced, secret programs are being authorized, and then there's this sort of secret air war that is seen but never confirmed publicly by any named officials. And, and, and I think that's going to be one of Obama's um, foreign policy legacies is sort of returning us to the era of, of, of covert action, not large-scale military occupations.